Hi ladies and gents, welcome back to Miss Raga's art room. Okay, we have all our contour line work done. We've got gorgeous two-point perspective boxes. We've got spheres. We've got mannequins interacting with our space. Now it's time to give it some dimension with shading. All right, so you're gonna need your shading tools. I recommend a chamois cloth if you don't have the chamois cloth. Tissue will work great or a piece of paper towel. An eraser. If you want to get one of the cap erasers from me too, I can give you those. Regular old wooden number two pencil. I recommend a tortillion, okay, as well as a Q-tip. If you don't have a tortillion, Q-tip's gonna work great. Or get yourself an extra piece of paper towel and twist it into a point. That'll work really good too, okay? So first thing we want to declare is a light source. Now, we discussed how this isn't realistic drawing. It, it, it's just not. We've created an invented imaginary space. Um, what we want to do is just declare a light source so we can get a sense of form, a sense of these being three-dimensional, and kind of how that light might interact with it. That's part of the spatial intelligence or spatial acuity we've been talking about, is understanding how that light might act with these three-dimensional objects. So, on either the left or right, sand, right, right hand side of your paper, I'd like you to write light source. Light source. Excellent. And then I want you to actually give yourself like little light bars. You're going to imagine that light is like flooding in evenly across the whole side of this page. Now, we know by rules of shading that go back to like sixth, seventh grade, so this is a good refresher, that the sides that are closest to my light source are going to be the light value ones. So let's give them L's. And for this drawing exercise, I'm going to allow you to leave the light side of the boxes truly light, like we're going to leave it the white of the paper. Now, we would know, again, according to rules of shading and how light interacts with objects, ideally, the direct opposite side of that box would be the darkest. But that's actually a side we can't see in two-point perspective, is it? It's constantly blocked from our view. So we're going to pick the one directly next to it, kind of as our next closest. And this is going to be our dark value. And then we will imagine then theoretically that middle are our tops and our bottoms. So give yourself just a little label to work with. All right. Now, as we start shading, some good shading things to follow. Um, remember, sometimes we get some smudginess happening. So you may want to grab yourself a sheet of scrap paper out of the recycle bin, grab one of my little shade guards if you're with me in class today, um, or even uh, if you just get like a piece of that scrap paper towel again or something, have something to rest your hand on. So that as you're shading over your drawing, you're rubbing against the paper and not your drawing. That's gonna stop you from smudging everything, okay? So let's start with our darks only. So let's start by doing the dark sides of the boxes. So nice, heavy pencil pressure, firm, right? It doesn't have to be the darkest pencil pressure you've ever used, but you do want firm pencil pressure. And you're going to shade in the dark value side of your box. And I kind of like to start with dark, you know, here I'm going to rotate my paper so it's just easier for me to shade. Hopefully I'm not too far off screen as I go. I'm going to try to keep this as centered as I can, ladies and gents. Get right up to the edge of your boxes, good craftsmanship, shade, 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 shade. Try to get nice, even pencil stroke, not too streaky. Get it filled in right to the corner, terrific. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go a little bit heavier in the middle there. All right, and now I'm gonna use either my Q-tip, a tortillion, my goodness, I could even use the corner of the chamois cloth, and let's do some good blending. If your um, blender has like too much pencil worked up on it, just use the chamois cloth or some scrap paper on the side. Just clean it off. And I like the tortillions because they get right up to the edge. Um, another thing you could do, again, if you don't have the tortillion at home, but you do have a Q-tip. Oops, I over blended. I'll show you what to do next. Okay. You can, to get a detailed blender, take the cotton off of one end of the Q-tip, or most of it at least, pull some of that cotton off, and just use kind of the pointed wood end as opposed to the light fluffy end, and that can help you get and smudge into some of these detail corners. Now, if you over smudge, you get fuzzy edges like that. 
take your eraser, cap eraser from me, or, um, or the chunk eraser, your own pencil eraser, and just touch up the edges, okay? Now, I know I have my middle value here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase my M, and I'm just going to now apply middle value to my box. So I'm really, I'm not pressing hard at all. I'm just putting in a tone that is distinctly lighter than my dark value, but not so light that it's like the white of the paper, okay? I'm gonna smudge again. I'm gonna bring my smudging right up to the edge of this dark side. Do not, ladies and gents, re-outline. Just let the planes of value meeting each other define where the planes of the box start and stop. That's gonna give you the most three-dimensional look. Remember, outlining flattens. It's not that outlining is bad, it's just that we don't wanna do that every single time on our drawings. There are times when it's gonna be appropriate and times when it's not. And then the last thing I'll do, we're gonna leave in this drawing our lights, the pure white of the paper. If you wanted to, you could use that ballerina pressure, very, very light, like barely any pressure on the paper, and add a light little tone, okay? But for this one, we're focused more on just the dark, middle, and light. Let's talk about boxes on the horizon line for a second, though. One thing you'll notice about your box on the horizon line is you're not gonna have any middles. You're just focused exclusively on the darks. So those, you get to do a little bit less shading because you've got just the dark value to worry about. So one more time, I'm gonna use my pencil to get right up to the edges. Shade, shade, shade. I'm not going off screen too much. I really like to rotate my drawing paper so that my shading hand is always in a comfortable position. That way I just have the most control, right? And I don't have to worry about, you know, whether or not I'm pressing too hard, too light. I can just, I can just kind of focus on that shading work. Okay, I'm gonna give it a good smudge again. I'm gonna kind of blend those pencil strokes out. Oops, oops, as I move things all around. Keep your shade guard under your working hand that's resting on the paper so that you're not smudging your work. It also stops you from getting pencil all the way up the side of your hand, which can be really frustrating sometimes, you know, and then it ends up on our clothes and our face and like, what are we gonna do? Okay, and then lastly, I'm gonna take my eraser and I'll just erase that L on my light side. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video for a minute and I'm gonna continue shading and I'll catch you back when I've got the boxes done so you can see my consistently shaded light source. All right, be back in a minute, ladies and gents. All right, and we're back, ladies and gents. Okay, so you can see that again, it's not realistic shading, but we've consistently shaded our boxes according to the light source, right? We have our dark sides, we have our light sides, and we have our middles. And that gives us a sense of form. All right, so what we're gonna do next is using the same light source, again, imagining that light is flooding evenly from the side, we're gonna tackle spheres and then translate that to the mannequins, all right? So join me in the next video as to how we start doing rounded objects as opposed to flat-sided objects. All right, take care, ladies and gents. Thanks for joining me in Ms. Raga's art room.